Hello everyone! Good day! I'm Caroline B. Candelario and I'm going to discuss another type of literary piece from English and American literature, which is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. So now, sit back, relax, and let's learn! But before we proceed in our discussion, let's have first a simple activity. Our activity is called Let's Observe to Learn. You will going to analyze and observe the given pictures and give ideas and insights about it. So we have here picture number one, picture number two, picture number three, and picture number four. Now, what did you observe in our first picture, second picture, third picture, and fourth picture? Very good! In the first picture and second picture shows a person being prideful. And on the third picture and fourth picture shows prejudice. Before we proceed, let's define first what is pride and what is prejudice. Being prideful is having or showing arrogant superiority to and disdain of those one views as unworthy. And when we say prejudice, it is an unfair feeling of dislike for a person or group of people because of race, sex, religion, and etc. Now that you know the meaning of pride and prejudice, allow me to present to you our objectives for this day. At the end of the lesson, the students are expected to achieve the following with at least 75% proficiency level. Objective number one, identify the literary elements presented in the novel Pride and Prejudice. Objective number two, relate the themes of the novel to today's society. And objective number three, compose a short reflection about the significance of the novel. Pride and Prejudice tells the love story of Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, both of whom have to overcome their biases in order to end up together. Throughout the novel, both of the characters learn to unlearn their pride and prejudice so that they can come to accept the other's goodness of character. And now, Let's start discussing the historical background of Pride and Prejudice. The events of Pride and Prejudice takes place in England in the late 18th century and early 19th centuries. The novel was written around the same period and reflected on Austen's peers. So this period corresponds to the Georgian era from 1714 to 1830. So it was named Georgian era after the four successive kings of England. So we have George the First to George the Fourth. Pride and Prejudice was influenced by Austen's life in that her real life experiences with the British landed gentry, the clergy, the militia, and the country life are seen mirrored in the book. And now to know who is Jane Austen, Let's discuss the author of Pride and Prejudice and her life. Jane Austen was born on December 16, 1775 in Steveton, Hampshire, England. And she died on July 18, 1817 in Winchester, Hampshire. She was an English writer who first gave the novel its distinctly modern character through her treatment of ordinary people in everyday life. She also published four novels during her lifetime. The first is The Sense and Sensibility in 1811, Pride and Prejudice in 1813, Mansfield Park in 1814, and Emma in 1815. The setting of the novel is set in England at some point in the very late 1700s to early 1800s, so, the exact dates are unclear. But, we know the action takes place sometime during the Napoleonic Wars 
between 1797 to 1815. Because Austin references soldiers and regiments. And now, let's know who are the characters of the story. The first character of the story is Elizabeth Bennet. She is bold, intelligent, and independent with a witty sense of humor. She considers herself to be a proper young lady and a good judge of character. However, throughout the novel, Lizzie, that is her nickname, realizes that she is not perfect. She does misjudge people at times. She is the novel's protagonist and the second daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. And Elizabeth is the most intelligent and sensible of the five Bennet sisters. The next character of the story is Fitzwilliam Darcy. He is a wealthy gentleman, the master of Pemberley, and he is also a nephew of Lady Catherine de Bora. Though Darcy is intelligent and honest, his excess of pride causes him to look down on his social inferiors. Over the course of the novel, he tempers his class consciousness and learns to admire and love Elizabeth for her strong character. The next character of the story is Jane Bennet. She is the eldest and most beautiful Bennet sister. And Jane is more reserved and gentler than Elizabeth. The easy pleasantness with which she and Bingley interact contrasts starkly with the mutual distaste that marks the encounters between Elizabeth and Darcy. She is the closest and confidant of Elizabeth Bennet, and she thinks well of almost everyone and wants a happy life and marriage based on love. The next one is Charles Bangley. Charles Bangley is considerably wealthy and he is also the best friend of Darcy. He is a good-natured and wealthy man who falls in love with Jane. He is easily influenced by others, especially by his close friend, Darcy. The fifth character of the story is Mr. Bennet. Mr. Bennet is an intelligent but eccentric and sarcastic man who is fond of his two oldest daughters, which is Jane and Elizabeth, especially his favorite, Elizabeth, but scorns the rest of the family. The next character is the mother of Jane and Elizabeth, which is Mrs. Bennet. Mrs. Bennet is a woman of mean understanding, little information, and uncertain temper, who fancies herself nervous when she is discontented. She openly favors her two daughters, which are Jane and Lydia, because of Jane's beauty and Lydia's high spirits. The next character of the story is Lydia Bennet. Lydia Bennet is the youngest of five sisters in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. She is silly, immature, brash, and flirt. She likes nothing better than dancing and socializing, especially with the officers of Lilicia. The next character is Charlotte Lucas. She is Elizabeth's dear friend. She is pragmatic where Elizabeth is romantic and also six years older than Elizabeth. Charlotte does not view love as the most vital component of a marriage. She is more interested in having a comfortable life. The next character of the story is George Wickham. Who is George Wickham? He is a handsome, fortune-hunting militia officer, and Wickham's good looks and charm attract Elizabeth initially. But Darcy's revelation about Wickham's disreputable past clues her into his true nature and simultaneously draws her closer to Darcy. George Wickham seduces and charms Elizabeth first, and later on, he seduces Lydia. He has a pleasant, sociable character that gives off an instant good impression. And he has traded on this ability his entire life, from endearing himself to Darcy's father, to pursuing Georgina Darcy, and then charming all of women in their place.
The next character of the story is Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins is a pompous, generally idiotic clergyman who stands to inherit Mr. Bennett's property. And he is the worst combination of snobbish and obsequious. Why do you think Mr. Collins will inherit all the properties of the Bennett family? The answer is, the state is entailed, meaning that according to the terms of inheritance, it must go to male heir because Mr. Bennett's children are all female and the property will, by law, go to the next closest male relative, which is Mr. Collins. The next character of the story is Miss Bangley. She is a very craft, vain, and antagonist and snobby. She only wear designer's clothing and only talks to people with connections in high places. And she is friendly and smiling to people, to their face, but only talks smack about them behind their backs. So in short, Miss Bangley is a backstabber woman. The next character of the story is Lady Catherine Deborah. She is a rich, bossy, noble woman Mr. Collins' patron and Darcy's aunt. Lady Catherine epitomizes class snobbery, especially in her attempts to order the middle class Elizabeth away from her well-breathed nephew. The next characters of the story are Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner. The Gardiners are a happily married couple with four children. So, Mr. Gardiner is Mr. Bennett's brother. Mrs. Gardiner is particularly close to Jane and Elizabeth and offers them good advice. They stand for decency, intelligence, good manners, and kindness. The next character is Georgina Darcy. Georgina Darcy is the youngest and only sister of Fitzwilliam Darcy. She is immensely pretty and shy, and she has a great skill at playing the pianoforte. The next character of the story is Mary Bennett. She is middle or third oldest of the five sisters in the Bennett family. She is between 18 or 19 years old. She is a plain personality, but sometimes abrupt. But she also has yearning to be a very accomplished woman as far as piano playing, singing, and reading are concerned. The last character that is present in the story of Pride and Prejudice is Catherine Bennett. Catherine Bennett is the fourth of the five Bennett sisters and is almost always called Kitty by her family and most intimate friends. Kitty is in the shadow of her younger sister, which is Lydia. She often simply repeating or supporting Lydia's own opinions. And she is often seen together with her younger sister and various scenes, dancing at the assembly room at Lucas Lodge and out in town. That's all for my discussion, but we are not done yet. Because my partner, which is Johanna Brillante, will going to discuss the continuation of the story. So sit back, relax, and just enjoy learning. Again, I'm Carlin Dicanilario. Thank you everyone, and thank you for listening. A pleasant day to everyone. I am Johanna Brillante, and I will also be discussing the Pride and Prejudice. The contents of my discussion will revolve around the plot summary, the theme, the literary movement, and the reaction. Let's start off with a plot summary of The Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. The novel started with the arrival of Charles Bingley and Mrs. Bennet setting her sight on him because she thinks he would be a suitable husband for one of her daughters. Charles Bingley is a wealthy man and he purchased Netherfield an estate near the Bennets, and he is blissfully uncaring about social class. Then, at a ball, Bingley takes an immediate interest in the beautiful and shy Jane. 
Jane is one of Mr. and Mrs. Bennett's daughters. Next, we have the encounter between Bingley's friend, Fitzwilliam Darcy, and Elizabeth, one of Mrs. Bennett's daughters. They had an encounter which is less cordial, and the author, Austin, reverses the convention of first impressions, wherein Darcy was held aloof because of the pride of rank and fortune, and prejudice against the social inferiority of Elizabeth's family, and same goes for Elizabeth, wherein she was also equally aloof because of the pride of self-respect and prejudice against Darcy's snobbery. Next, we have the arrival of Pompous Collins, hoping to marry one of the Bennet sisters. Mrs. Bennet steers him towards Elizabeth, but the latter refuses his offer of marriage because she is a woman of integrity and she wants to marry someone whom she really loves. Next, we have the encounter between Elizabeth and the charming George Wickham. George is a handsome fortune-hunting militia officer and because of his good looks and charm, Elizabeth was attracted to him. And there is also a mutual attraction between the two and he informs her that Darcy has denied him his inheritance. Next, we have the abrupt departure of Charles Bingley for London and Elizabeth's dislike towards Darcy Mounting because she thought that Darcy was hindering and discouraging Charles' relationship with her sister, Jane. While Elizabeth's dislike towards Darcy Mount, the latter feels the opposite. Darcy started growing increasingly fond of Elizabeth, admiring her intelligence and vitality. Next event in the novel was Elizabeth visiting Charlotte, who is already married with Mr. Collins. Before, when Elizabeth refused to accept the proposal of Mr. Collins, he then married Elizabeth's best friend, which is Charlotte. Next, we have Darcy professing his love for Elizabeth and his proposal, and Elizabeth refusing it. With that, Darcy demanded an explanation, and Elizabeth told her accusations to him about Jane and Wickham. She accused him of hindering Jane and Charles' relationship as well as denying the inheritance of George Wickham. Next, we have Darcy's consequent letters to Elizabeth explaining his side. He wrote subsequent letters to Elizabeth to explain that he separated Charles and Jane because he thought and he did not believe that Jane returned Bingley's affection. And as for Wickham, he disclosed that Wickham, after squandering his inheritance, he tried to marry Doris's 15-year-old sister in an attempt to gain possession of his fortune. And with Doris's explanations and revelations, Elizabeth started to see Darcy in a new light. Next, we have Lydia, the youngest Bennet sister, eloping with George Wickham, and Elizabeth worrying that it could ruin the reputation of the other Bennet sisters. Next, Elizabeth told Darcy about the news, and he persuaded Wickham to marry Lydia, offering him money and keeping it a secret, but Elizabeth learned about his actions. She just found out what Darcy did. Next, at the same time when Darcy encourages Wickham to marry Lydia, Charles Bingley and Jane Bennett got engaged. After Jane Bennett and Charles Bingley's engagement, finally Darcy proposed again to Jane and the latter accepted his proposal. And that's the story of how Elizabeth Bennett and Darcy Fitzwilliam overcame their pride and prejudice against each other. Now that we are done with the plot summary of the novel, let us focus on the literary movement evident in it. The particular literary movement that is evident in the novel Pride and Prejudice is Romanticism because it has three main themes which are family, marriage, and class. Together, these themes wind throughout the book, creating a story that, when analyzed, create a significant work of the Romanticism literary movement. Now, let us delve on to the evident themes in the novel. For the themes, we have six. First is love, reputation, class, family, integrity, and last, 
gender. For the first evident theme in the novel, we have love. Pride and Prejudice contains one of the most cherished love stories in English literature, which is the courtship between Darcy and Elizabeth. In the novel, Elizabeth's pride makes her misjudge Darcy on the basis of first impression, while Darcy's prejudice against Elizabeth's poor social standing blinds him. But still, they were still able to overcome those stumbling blocks that rooted on the lover's own personal qualities. For the next theme evident in the novel, we have reputation. Pride and Prejudice depicts a society in which a woman's reputation is of the utmost importance. A woman is expected to behave in certain ways, and stepping outside the social norms makes her vulnerable to ostracism. When we say ostracism, this means a treatment that is deliberately exclusionary. For the next theme, we have class. The theme of class is related to reputation in that both reflect the strictly regimented nature of life for the middle and upper classes in Regency England. The lines of class are strictly drawn. And it was also shown and evident in the novel that while the Bennets, who are middle class, while they may socialize with the upper class Bingleys and Darcy's, they are clearly they are social inferiors and they are treated as such. Next, we have a family. Family is an integral theme in the novel. All of the characters operate within networks of family connections that shape their decisions and perspectives. For the female characters in the novel, the influence and behavior of their family member is a significant factor in their lives. Another theme we have is integrity. Elizabeth Bennet considers herself to have very high standards of integrity. She thinks it is very important to only marry a man she loves and respects, despite the pressure to achieve economic security. Elizabeth Bennet is an example of a woman of integrity because she is often frustrated and disappointed by the way she sees others behaving. For the last theme, we have gender. Gender is a key theme in Pride and Prejudice. The story takes place at a time when gender roles were quite rigid, and men and women had a very different set of options and influences. It was also emphasized in the novel that marriage is a pressing question for female characters like Charlotte Lucas and Elizabeth Bennet because that's the only way they can achieve economic stability and economy. With that, we are now done with the evident themes in the novel. Let us now have the reaction. Pride and Prejudice is an indeed great literary work, for it touches the heart of the readers, as well as those who watched its movie adaptation. So this novel had its movie adaptation on the year 2005, and next it showcases how the main characters overcame their Pride and Prejudice against each other, which are the protagonists of the story. Darcy and Elizabeth. And for the last we have, the story itself is a great source of lessons that can still be seen even in today's society. So this novel prompts us great understanding on the complexities of family, social class, and love conquering societal norms and expectations. That would be the end of my discussion. Thank you for watching and listening.